it could be tomorrow it could be next week it could be a year from now but bitch you're about to gorge yourself on whatever it is that you are restricting yourself from what's going on salty crew welcome back to another video and if you're new here my name is Nicole and I've struggled a lot over the past I would say five or six years with disordered eating emotional eating binge eating and just not having a healthy relationship with food at all and I'm just kind of starting to open up and talk about it more because I know that this is a very shameful thing that isn't talked about and I want to open up that door and allow people to feel comfortable talking about it if they want to with friends family loved ones and just kind of like I just feel that talking about it and voicing what you're really going through all of this hard shit with food, it's important and vital for the healing process for you to move forward and start that healing journey. So I'm inviting you to engage in this conversation, ask questions in the comments, and continue to have conversations in the comments about the topic of food and our relationship with it and diet and diet culture and I know a lot of you are vegan and plant-based and maybe you can share your experience with that because a lot of people praise a vegan plant-based diet for curing all of their eating disorders and disordered eating but for a lot of other people it actually has the opposite effect and I was one of those where it really fucked with me. So I am going to be answering some of your questions about my relationship with food. I have come a long way since I started this journey about a year and a half ago and by no means am I like perfect, you know, at my perfect destination of like health and my relationship with food is like rock solid. But oh my god, I have come so so far in the past year and a half and I'm really proud of myself and I want to talk about this more and I think we should talk about it more. So I'm gonna be answering some questions. I posted a question box on my Instagram stories. Make sure to follow me on there if you're not because I'm going to be facilitating these conversations a lot more on there. So make sure you check me out at more salt please and um let's get into the questions okay the first question is how do you combat those sudden urges to binge when you're alone and wow this was such a hurdle for me because i used to do this all the time this is where i like took out all of my emotional eating binge urges was when i was alone um in my car usually that's like the place that i binge the most i would like go to multiple like fast food restaurants and like get different types of food it was insane you guys and and all of it had like a nostalgic feel to it all of it was stuff that i had eaten when i was younger or just maybe was like a tradition that um i used to eat a lot as a kid something like that those are the types of foods that i really gravitated towards the thing with emotional eating binge eating is that it's never about the food there's a plane going over, sorry. It's usually never about the food. You're usually trying to suppress some type of negative emotion that you don't want to deal with. It could be loneliness. It could be not speaking your mind or your truth in your everyday life and you don't know how to deal with that. It might be you not living authentically how you want to be living. You could be living for your parents, for a significant other, for your friends. You could just be unhappy with your life circumstances. That's a super common one. You might not uh, be getting the amount of income that you want to be receiving. You might hate where you live. You might just not like the weather that day. You're a sunny weather person and it's been overcast and cloudy for the past week and you don't know how to deal with that. So emotional eating, I just wanna preface this, emotional eating isn't bad. It's okay to emotionally eat. The problems arise when we use food as a way to not deal with the deeper things that are going on. And that often shows up as emotional eating and using it as a crutch and using food to fill a void and to substitute something that we're not receiving in our everyday life. When you start healing your relationship with food, it's going to take a lot of self-awareness. For me, I prided myself in being this independent, introvert, 
woman who just loved to be alone. I grew up an only child, so I thrive by myself. I absolutely love it. But I also am my best self when I have thriving, loving, close relationships with friends. And also my husband, obviously. I married, in case you didn't know. When I wasn't connecting with people, I tend to isolate when I'm very stressed or depressed or anxious. I isolate myself from people instead of like bringing people in and I I have a really bad habit. My fatal flaw is that I don't like to burden people with my problems, so I will put up a front that everything is okay, or I just won't talk about the hard things that I might be going through, and I don't know how to ask for help because I had to take care of myself a lot growing up, and I was kind of forced to be independent. So that's like my default setting. Yeah, so that's kind of like my baggage in a nutshell. And so what I was finding for myself is that, say for instance, I went to a party and I'm the type of person who, when I go to a party, I connect with like one or two people. It's usually one person and me and that new person, we either we meet for the first time or like we're an acquaintance and I haven't gotten to know them that well. We will literally sit in a corner and talk for hours, the entire party, just me and that one person. And it'll be just like the most amazing life-giving conversation ever. I absolutely love it. Having deep, meaningful conversations in a small group setting is like my, I live my best life in those moments. And so if I ever went to a party or get together with people and I didn't get that connection that I was looking for with one or two people, I felt unsettled in my soul and I just wasn't satisfied. So I would literally hang out by the food table and just continually just shove food down my throat because that's just what I did when I was uncomfortable and when I wasn't meeting my needs in some category or my needs weren't being met. And so I would just fill up on this food um, when I wasn't receiving connection with other people and I would leave beating myself up about that because, you know, usually at a party, it's not healthy food that you're like eating a ton of, you know, it's like chips and dip and like bread and charcuterie board and like, you know, chocolate and candy and cookies and all this stuff. So, you know, those are the type of things that I would eat. And, you know, those things give you like a nice boost of serotonin and it feels good in the moment. And then after it, it's just, it passes so quickly and you don't get what you really were after after, which was human connection with someone else. And that would happen continuously for me. And that's like a pattern that always showed up in my life. And that's just one simple example. So I, because I wasn't receiving that connection, I wanted to get my fix of fulfillment with food instead. So I would hang out at the food table all night or I would leave the party alone and I would go through like the Taco Bell drive through and like gorge myself on fucking Taco Bell, which, you know, no one feels great after Taco Bell. And then after that, it's just, it's a continual vicious cycle of not getting your needs met, using food to comfort yourself, binging on those foods, physically feeling ill and not great about yourself, internalizing those things, not talking about it, not expressing yourself, just internalizing all of this self-hate and just um, it's just shameful and that in turn uh, it makes you want to turn to food again to make yourself feel better and it's just a constant vicious cycle so I would encourage you if you're alone and you get a sudden urge to binge stop and take three deep breaths and self-reflect and figure out what am I really craving right now? Am I really craving this McDonald's uh, Big Mac or am I really craving connection? Am I really craving going to the beach and just like getting in touch with nature again because you know what now that I think about it I haven't spent time in nature in like months and that's what I really love and just take evaluation of what brings you the most joy? What brings you peace? Is it being around other people? Is it being alone? Is it helping someone? Is it being around animals? There's so many different things that bring us joy that doesn't have to be food, but it doesn't not have to be food. It just comes down to using other tools other than food to fulfill yourself. And for me, I just, I didn't have those tools available 
uh, to me for so long, or I just, I mean, I did, obviously, but I just didn't think about it. Food was just always so easy. It was such an easy, quick fix. The thing is, is when you only rely on food to cheer you up, it causes so many other problems. Obviously, like, weight gain, acne, like, oh my god, I would go through periods where I would break out so intensely because you're eating, like, the shittiest food you know? And obviously there's people who binge on healthy stuff too. I would go through those phases as well where I would just eat like so many potatoes, like when, especially when I was in my like really clean plant-based days. Oh my god, I would like binge on fucking potatoes and some avocado and like what else would I eat? Chickpeas, like just ra random plant-based foods that are supposed to be like healthy, but you know, you just gorge yourself on them and of course you're not satisfied and it's just, like I said before, a vicious cycle. So in order to stop the cycle, you need to stop, self-reflect and figure out what are you really looking and searching for? What are you craving? And go do those things. And it takes some time, you're not gonna be perfect, it takes a lot of practice and you're gonna fail. And I just, you're not gonna fail totally. I'm just gonna say, I'm just saying you're gonna fail over and over again and that's just part of the process. But as you practice and as you put these things into motion, they become easier and easier and you start retraining your brain to go towards other ways of self-soothing other than food. I'm probably gonna break up this video into a few different parts because I don't wanna make super long videos every time. Um, let me know if you want this to be a series because I just have a lot to say on this topic and I think I've gone through so many of the things that you guys have written in about and I just wanna share my experience and like what I've learned and how I overcome that and how I work through it. So yeah, let me know if you're interested in that. I think I might answer one more question in this video and then I might go to a part two. So let's see. There's a lot of questions about how do I avoid eating something terrible when I'm feeling emotional or how do I not give into cravings without restricting and all these different things. <sighs> Let me just say, whenever you restrict anything that you really, really want to eat, you will end up binging or overeating on it later. That's just like a fact. It's just the law of eating, dieting, emotional eating. That's just what always ends up happening. It could be tomorrow, it could be next week, it could be a year from now, but bitch, you're about to gorge yourself on whatever it is that you are restricting yourself from. So let me just say, it's okay to eat unhealthy things. And I think it's, we need to be careful about the language that we use. Obviously there's foods that are unhealthy. I like to say maybe like less nutritious. Nutritious and less nutritious. That's just obviously, duh, a fact. Plain baked potato is gonna be healthier than like deep fried french fries from a fast food restaurant or wherever. So when you start diving into the world of intuitive eating, mindful eating, a big thing is eating what you're craving. And a lot of people think like, oh my God, if I eat something that is like, you know, a fear food, let's say it's like ice cream, if I eat a scoop of ice cream, I am gonna go fucking ape shit and I will eat ice cream every day. I'll eat an entire pint and an entire gallon and like I will not be stopped. But here's the thing. I want you, next time you have a really strong urge to eat something unhealthy, a fear food let's say, whether it's bread, french fries, donuts, ice cream, I want you to take a serving of that thing and I want you to sit down without any distractions. Go to like a really beautiful place, sit by the beach, watch the ocean waves crash into the shore. Go to the forest and just like go to a place that you just love and brings you so much joy. And I want you to intentionally eat said food. Let's say it's ice cream. I want you to take that ice cream and I want you to like deck it out. I want you to add some whipped cream, a cherry on top, some fudge, Go to the Froyo place and like, you know, load up on toppings. And I want you to sit down and really savor every bite. And I want you to sit with it. No distractions. Put your phone away. Put on some music. Some fun music that you really like to listen to. Bossa Nova, some jazz, some like French bistro music, top 40s, whatever your shit is. And I want you to really enjoy that moment of you eating that Froyo and just soak it in. Take in all the textures, all the flavors, the fucking fruity pebbles and the raspberries that you put on top and really take it in and ask 
these questions. Is this as good as I thought it was gonna be? Were my expectations way too high? And as I'm sitting here eating this, it's actually not as good as I thought it was gonna be. Or is it meeting my expectations completely? I'm obsessed with this moment right now. I'm eating this froyo and it's just everything. And ask, also ask yourself, what does this taste like? Does this taste like I remember? Like, oh my God, I haven't had this in years. Is it even good? Like, are the flavors good? Are the textures good? Is this meeting my expectations? How do I feel when I'm eating it? Am I feeling joyful, happy, or am I just sad? Am I just fucking... Am I just crying as I'm eating this froyo? Bring that curiosity to that moment of eating a fear food and really take it in. And when you're finished, reflect on that as well. How do I feel now? Was it worth it? Am I happy I ate that? Do I regret that? And usually what will happen is if you do all those things, you probably won't have the urge to go back for another froyo, or you might not even finish it, to be honest with you. I know for me, like I always felt this weird obligation. That's the thing like obligation was such a big thing with me and emotional eating it's like if I got all of this food that I wanted to just fucking go ham on I felt obligated to finish it even if I didn't even like it it's like yeah it was good for maybe the first two bites and then after that it's like why am I eating this it's not even that good so really take a second and ask yourself those questions and just be curious but give yourself permission to eat your whatever it is you're craving but i want you to make it special like that's the key don't do it in a secretive like hidden bingy way that you normally would you know where you're like maybe standing over the fucking trash can in your kitchen just shoveling it down your throat like make it special i remember for me like um i love banana bread and there's a recipe in my ebook it's the um chocolate chip banana bread and it's vegan and gluten free and it's so fucking good and it's not healthy like it has a ton of sugar oil all these things um and it is so good like i mean when when i make it at home tim and i will eat it that day like we will literally finish the entire loaf and something that's really helped me is you know when you like go and you make a banana bread or whatever and you like take a little slice and you're like i'm just gonna have just a little, little sliver and you're like okay cool like and you eat your little sliver and you're like fuck I want another little sliver I need another piece and you slowly start shaving down that loaf of banana bread and by the time you know it you're literally halfway done with it and you're just like what have I become who am I and you feel that shame and that uncomfortableness and you just you internalize it but here's the thing here's what i started to do i started to make my cravings special and i would really just like indulge in them but i would be so radically present while i was an indul while i was indulging in them i wasn't trying to be like absent-mindedly like shoving things down my throat just to like fulfill this like obligatory need to consume said food what i would do is i would take a normal size of like this thick of banana bread a decent size a thick ass piece of banana bread and what I would do is I would put it in a saute pan with a little bit of butter and I would get it nice and crispy on both sides and then I would plate it up I'd have a little glass a cup of tea or coffee and I would eat it with a fork and I would sit down and I would listen to some bossa nova and I would enjoy every fucking bite of that banana bread and you know what when I was done with that thick slice of banana bread I didn't want another one because I thoroughly embraced that experience and I made it special and it wasn't shameful it was a celebration of food and the pleasure of eating something so delicious so I don't want you to be afraid of your cravings I want you to be fucking present during your cravings that's the key the key to start overcoming emotional eating and all of your fucked up eating habits is being able to be curious, label your emotions and figure out what you're actually feeling and craving in that moment that you want to binge and fulfilling those needs in other ways if possible. And if you want to indulge in a craving, do it. But if you're going to do it, go all out and really indulge, but be present during it and check in with yourself when you're eating that 
food. And I promise as you start incorporating those habits into your life, a lot will change. It might take a while, it might take a few months, six months, a year, and that's okay. I want you guys to be patient with yourselves. I am not anywhere near where I wanna be with food. I mean, I, I, I've I come such a long way. I'm very proud of my progress and my relationship with food right now. I still have a long way to go. I'm not perfect, it's a journey. It's gonna fluctuate, things are gonna change, but I just want you to embrace all of it. Not, Don't beat yourself up if you quote unquote slip up and have a binge moment. I want you to break the cycle and have the strength to do that because it, oh my God, you have to be so strong to do this work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of inner reflection and um, it's not, it's not easy. Okay. I want to acknowledge you guys. It's not easy. It's fucking hard, but I know that you can do it. And um, I really hope all of these tips helped you and I want to film more videos like this. I have other questions that I wasn't able to get to. I just have so much to say about this. Um, I really hope it helped. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comment section below. Let's continue the conversation down in the comments. I would love to hear your experience with this. Do you relate? Have you overcome emotional eating? Do you have a healthy relationship with food? Are you struggling with your relationship with food? How are you navigating that? I love you guys so much. I hope you're having an amazing day and I will see you very soon. Diet Coke ain't good for the soul. Give me that, give me that orange soda. Give me a grape like you see in the movies. Bubble to the top like a smoothie, you'll see. I'll do you like a nine to five.